Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Justin, K3E. This is Blackbeard's Radio, coming to you today from inside the house. Turns out, uh, even in southeastern North Carolina, uh, we're having effects from Hurricane Helen. Helena? Helen? Hel- Helene? Either way. Uh, today's video, part of the Battery Box series. Uh, we are going to be building the Battery Box. So stick with me, and we'll get into it. Not sure how much I'm going to record of each individual wire getting uh, snipped, cut to length, trimmed, crimped, uh, but I'll at least go over each step by step and maybe show you how to uh, do a couple things along the way. Hang on, guys. Here we go. All right, guys. Before we get started, if you hear any random beeps, I want you to know I have my 2 meter, 70 centimeter radio going on in my shack. And uh, I'm doing that because of weather alerts. We just got another tornado warning. Uh, But also I'm monitoring our Aries repeater and a couple different club repeaters that I'm involved in. So I'm giving you a slow scan over once again of all the parts and pieces that are gonna be used. Uh, This is gonna be my distribution wire from the battery to the distribution block. There's my distribution block I'm gonna use. It's a fuse distribution block. Here's my relays I'm going to use. I'm going to put these on a switch. I'll get into that when I do it. Uh, This is my battery strap. These are my... uh, Hold on, let me open this up. My 50 amp charger port. Uh, that I'll put on the box. That way I can leave the charging terminals plugged into the battery so I never have to open the battery case, hopefully. Uh, Power pole kit, just in case. Power pole crimps. Uh, I'm using a, what I call a pine cone bit. It's a stepper bit. Uh, Wire strippers. I have a different set of crimps. Uh, Ratcheting crimps, wire strippers torch for heat shrink. I have my heat gun shroud that I bent into a half circle-ish for mm, shrinkable insulated wire terminals. I have my power works two pole through panel plugs. I have two of those. I also have PD chargers. Uh, PD meaning it's a power distribution charger. Uh, look back. I'll link the video in one of the corners uh, where I went over all of this specifically. There's my on-off switch that I'll be using, and the cycling bat, 100 amp hour mini, 12.8 volts. This thing is uh, four and a half inches deep, eight inches wide, nine inches tall. And then I'm putting it all in a Apache 4800 case. These are the Pelican, not Pelican cases you get from Harbor Freight. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to use my flag terminals everywhere I can to keep my wiring neat and tidy. Uh, Attempt to keep my wiring neat and tidy. Power pole distribution, for those of you that don't know. uh, The wire just plugs into the back, so not sure how I'm going to do that and keep it pretty yet, but... That's it. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, guys, here's the progression so far. Uh, I got the battery centered up, and if you look in the bottom, down here, you can see a couple dots. That's gonna be for my battery straps. Uh, Here's one right here. Oh dear. This is what the strap holder looks like. So it'll go in there like that. And then the strap will come up and over this way and then back down to that side. And I'm also gonna put one on the front side. You can see those two holes right there. And I'm gonna bring one up over this way. The foam in this thing is really tight. Yeah, 
I'll tell you what, if it's not my phone trying to hit me and kill me on the tripod, it's this thing. But uh, I cut a piece of foam to put under the battery too, just to give it a little bit of shock absorption more than anything. Um, you can see the density level of this foam on the bottom is the same thickness as this piece. So that 22 pound, or the 20 pound battery is squishing it. And that's probably about the max squish. That's where it's gonna sit uh, forever. I've got the power poles in on both sides. Uh, almost screwed up pretty good on this side. Uh, this down here is my USB charger port. Uh, you can see how close those two are together. I mean, it was close, close to not going in and not being able to tighten them. Uh, this is what it looks like on the side. Little weatherproof caps, power poles, USB with an on-off, uh, USB-C, USB-C, USB-A, and the two Cs are what they call PDs, and that stands for power distribution. So they'll actually charge a laptop. Um, it's mirrored on the other side. I have my push button that I need to put in still. I'm gonna wire it in right here. My charger is gonna go down here, right in there. Here's the weatherproof cover for it. And it'll go there-ish, like that. A little more centered maybe, but, and level hopefully. And then on the other side, I still have to put in the button. Uh, and then I've actually abandoned uh, the power distribution blocks and the the power distribution dang it the power distribution blocks and my fuse block my fuse block I could not get to work um, in this case if I would go with the larger case on wheels I could make it work um, I could make it work if I shifted the battery all the way to one side and I actually did that and I laid everything out but when I did that, I had, for once, a little bit of forethought. And I closed everything up, and I tried to carry it around, and the case just tipped over. I mean, 20 pounds in the bottom bottom corner on one side, it was just heavy. Uh, it, I mean, it fatigued my wrist just trying to carry it around uh, this little room I'm in. Um, and you can, I mean, so... I figured if it fatigued my forearm and wrist that fast, uh, probably not what I want if I'm going to be lugging it somewhere, you know, a couple hundred yards or whatever. Uh, so I went back to centering it up. So they sell these metal distribution blocks that go here. I'll insert a picture right here or something, but uh, I'm waiting on those to come in. And then I have to change up how I'm going to wire everything. Uh, before I was going to fuse everything with the fuse block that I showed you in the previous video. And that way it could be fused in. Uh, and you wouldn't need any fuses on the power poles. Uh, so now I have to order. I got to get in these distribution blocks that screw straight to the terminal tops. And then from there I have to run individual fuses to the power poles. Um, kind of like your radios come with, but that's what I'm going to run. And then, so I'm waiting on those to come in and I'm waiting on one more on off switch to come in. And then I'm waiting on another, uh, another relay. Um, initially because I had everything wired on the fuse block. Um, I was running two relays, one to each side, but it was going to be on one push switch. I was going to wire them together, and that way one off switch would power both sides. Well, now with changing all that, it's going to it would be extremely cumbersome to do that. So now I'm going to run one relay that is a hundred amp relay. And I'm going to mount it here. Well, it probably here. Uh, to get it away from the battery charger. So I'll run my power down to here and then my one push button or maybe 
I don't know yet. I still might put these on the switch. Um, but either way, I'm waiting on that relay to come in. So unfortunately, I'm kind of at a standstill and I have to pack all this crap away. I'm going to go ahead and cut my cables roughly to length with my twin lead. Uh, going to go ahead and get my power poles made up. That way I can poke them in whenever I'm ready. Uh, this is the wire it comes with for the 12 volt bat, uh, for the USB plugs. Um, so there's not a lot I can do. Uh, I'm going to make these up and put them in flag terminals and point the flags going up. And that way, you know, I don't, otherwise the wire would poke out to here. And if I point them up, the wire will just go to here and I can route it neatly on the top lid on the inside. <laughs> Because ultimately, you know, the negative on this side is here and the positive is here. So I'm going to have to stretch wire around. Uh, but I'll be able to keep it a little neater that way. And then the only other thing I'm going to be able to do today is my charger port. That way I can just plug my charger into it and I don't have to open the case ever, I hope. Uh, so I'm going to drill that hole, get that starter hole, get it outlined, and then... Uh, break out my multi-tool, Dremel, or jigsaw. I don't know which one I'm going to use. Whichever one I come to first in my toolbox. Uh, kind of get that set in place. And then I'll start routing wire without connecting anything. To try and get my wire length so I, I don't lose the day. And that way when my relay and distribution blocks get here, I can just start plugging crap in. And shorten it, make the final trim. And then be done. So, sorry. Don't have a whole lot to report. So, progress update. Got my strap holder bar thingies. Uh, heat shrunk. A little less metal around. Makes me, you know, it's a lot of energy. 100 amp hours is a lot to go wrong. Uh, here are my new uh, distribution blocks. Uh, they're made by V-Gate. Uh, you can see here's the positive. I'm putting over there, and I'm going to direct mount the negative on the battery right there. Uh, this is, for my positive, I was actually going to do my 100 amp relay I have coming. I'm going to do my 100 amp relay. So once I get my 100 amp pole relay things what it's called a relay what i'm going to do is actually bolt the relay directly to this because a 100 amp has a th threaded studs instead of uh typical pins uh instead of having four of those pins it's got threaded studs so i'm going to bolt uh, it's going to be a direct bolt to here and i'm going to run the battery to that and in the meantime, I'm just going to run a wire from my battery. Uh, this little wire, actually. From my battery positive to that. I need to wrap it in red tape first. That way I know it's positive. Because they only had black at the stone. Uh, but then everything off this distribution block will be on a switch. Uh, I had not put the switch in yet because I don't have the relay. And it doesn't do any good to put a switch in here that doesn't do anything. Uh, but the switch is going to go probably right here. Uh, and that'll switch everything on at once. So it'll switch on both of the, all four power poles, these two and the two on the other side, and all three USBs on both sides. Uh, the other thing that you missed was I put in my Anderson 50 amp charger. So these will get screwed directly to my battery onto the terminals. And here's what the weather cover looks like. That's what the Anderson 50 amp power pole looks like. Uh, remember, positive is on the left side with the shell up uh, every time straight from the factory. You can even see positive on the plug if right there. Every time, that's how it goes. That should be how all of your power poles are wired. That way, everything's universal. 
So uh, that's where I'm at. I'm about to finish. I'm about to start cutting wires for these for my USB outlets. Uh, I'm going to get them stretched to here and then to here for the ground. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing for my power poles on both sides. And the last thing I'm doing is dropping the battery in because once I drop the battery in, uh, everything's kind of got something that's energized near it. And I'm trying to eliminate as much potential problems as I can. Uh, what I'm doing for my power poles, though, I've changed up, and I'm actually going to run inline fuses instead of just instead of that six gain fuse box that just did not fit, no matter how I tried to make it fit, uh, except for like I told you, pushing it all the way to one corner, um, and then it just made the case awkward to carry. So what I'm doing is a bunch is four of these. So these will get, like two of these will get direct wired to the distribution block there to the power pole. So I'll stick them in. Oh, uh, see. already got the power pole end on it. So I'll stick those in there. Boop. And then direct wire those there. I still need to cover them. Uh, I mean, put an eyelet on it. Yeah, so I'm getting there, guys. Uh, yep, yeah, I'll come back to you once I make the next groundbreaking move, but, you know, it won't be a whole lot different. Again, I'm Justin, K3EE. -E. Later. All right, guys, here we go. All buttoned up. Uh, I made some progress. <laughs> Sorry, I told you I wasn't going to film all of this because it would have been a nightmare. Here's my ports, power poles, this is my USBs, uh, if you notice it on the USB-Cs it says U uh, PD, that's power distribution so you can charge laptops and whatnot from there. And then USB-A is still 3.0 so it's more power than normal. Got to turn it on so it doesn't have the parasitic draw. On the other side, everything is duplicated. And in the middle, where you normally have your vent relief, is where I put my power button. Uh, it's kind of out of the way. All my through holes for my straps, I used uh, flatheads and uh, finish washers. And my goal was to try and keep all my screwage under the rim, and that way it wouldn't scratch tables. I'm going to open up the case now and take you through it. Just like before, uh, the battery's in here. Except now, my power distribution blocks are on. I'm running distribution blocks for all of this. Um, all my plug wires. And then same thing over here. And the only wire that you see coming into the post of the battery actually go to the charger input. Uh, this one wire right here is for my relay. Uh, it's not a bare wire. It's actually cut flush. And then I put shrink wrap over top of it. And then I shrink wrapped over top of that shrink wrap. And I cut it long. That way, uh, this actually goes to my push button. So my push button right now is kind of a dummy. It just lights up. It doesn't do anything else besides light up. But once I have my relay in that's supposed to show up whenever... Uh, so I don't know when, uh, I'm pulling this battery terminal, this post off, and the relay, uh, it mounts hard, it hard mounts with posts uh, because it's 100 amp, so it'll actually screw into the battery terminal itself, and then uh, this will screw in directly to the other end of the relay, and if not, then I'm going to run a little tiny piece of wire or even a shunt, a 100 amp shunt to here, and I'll just locate 
the relay here uh, and then pull this over. So I'll have one wire going from the terminal to the relay and then from the relay to the distribution block. Uh, but all of that will still be mounted right in here. Uh, and if you see, I have all of this space available that I can put stuff on the side for future expansion because with 100 amp hours, again, my plan with this setup was to be self-sufficient for 24 hours. I can drop one battery, case, one radio, one laptop, and I can do anything I need to do. Wind link, HF radio plan for field day, winter field day, whatever the case may be, I can just handle it all myself and I don't need power. Uh, that's the goal, that's the design of the build. Um, this is not an everyday battery case. This isn't what I'll use for my normal POTA activations. I will still use my 18 amp hour battery for those. Uh, this has a very specific purpose. Uh, my buddy has one he built also, and uh, he lost power during Hurricane Helena or Helen or whatever. I, I don't know. But uh, his family actually used their power box to uh, charge all their laptops and their cell phones and tablets. Uh, and then he ended up running the internet off of it. So... It worked out great for him, uh, but that's it guys. That's all I got. Again, I'm Justin, K3EE. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you want any more specifics on items used, I'll try and post and link everything in the description of the video again. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't take you along for the whole ride, but there was a lot of it. You saw how tight all that wiring was. Uh, you wouldn't have been able to see a whole lot, um, so that's it. It's power poles and the power, the positive wire for the USBs going to the positive distribution block. And then to the negative distribution block is the negative power poles and the negative side of the USBs. And then I wired in the switch the way that the instructions told me to. And then I hooked it up to the battery. That's it. Uh, pretty cut and dry, honestly. Uh, so yeah, again, I'm Justin, K3EE, Blackbeard Radio. Uh, please like and subscribe. Don't forget, at 1,000 subscri subscribers, I'm going to do an antenna giveaway, a G5 RV. I'll talk to you all later. Thanks, guys.